All right, hello and welcome to the demo portion of the Career Tech Podcast. If you've not yet listened to the first part of this podcast, head on over to iTunes or Google Play or wherever you uh, watch or listen to your uh, favorite podcasts and check out Career Tech. I'm speaking today with Luke Pitkin, the co-founder of Sniper, a recruiting platform. And uh, Luke, welcome to the welcome to the demo portion of our podcast today, if you will. And I'm excited to actually get behind the scenes and take a look at what Sniper can do for uh, for us and for the recruitment industry in general. Awesome. So yeah, um, I, I'll quickly run you through the demo. And um, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the demo from the employer perspective. So what that means is if you were an employer that needs to use a recruitment consultant, or in our case, if you wanted to use one of the freelance recruitment consultants in our community, um, this demo will show you how you get onto the system, how you post a role, start to choose which recruiter you feel like is going to be the one to support you. And then it will show you how to kind of move the job down our pipeline from the you know, initial applicants coming in to interview and to complete. So, so can you see the screen? <clears throat> I can. Yep. I'm good. Yeah. Awesome. So basically when you're an employee and you first come in, this screen will be completely empty uh, and you just, just get a job live. You, there's a new job button up here, which you just come in and hit and, this is where we ask you for um, an overview of what it is that you're looking to fill. So, okay, wants me to log in. Let me log in. Okay, so that, that was a question I was going to count. If I'm a freelance recruiter, I would need to create an account with you, and it's going to take me through this LinkedIn sign-in to get started? <clears throat> yeah, exactly that. So whether you're an employer or whether you're a recruiter, um, I, can, I can show you, actually. Okay. Um, do you want me to show you? Go back? and uh, Sure, yeah. Yeah, from the yeah if, if it doesn't take long, sure. No, no, it doesn't say you won't be able to see it because I'm already a member. But basically what happens is you, you come to the, the site, the homepage will look like this. Whether you're an employer or a recruiter, you just hit the, the relevant button. Um, okay. It will then take you through to, it doesn't do it for me because it, uh, I'm already logged in, but it will take you sure. through then to that link, the LinkedIn page that you saw. Um, and then you'll have to just agree to our terms and conditions, enter a contact number, and that's it. You're then into the okay. site. Cool. Simple. Simple. Yeah, we wanted to keep it simple. Um, we, we wanted to make it easy because I think sometimes when people get bombarded with a long list of questions to answer and all these things, they don't want to do it. So we actually find that people get into the site in about 20 to 30 seconds, um, have a look around, and then they call us and say, hey, this looks really cool. What's it all about? So, you know, that, nice. that seems, to, it seems to work for us. Um, cool. But, yeah, so, so if you're an employer, you come in, you, you hit the new job button. Um, this is where we get the employer to provide us with some information about what candidate they're looking for. So they start by drop, dragging and dropping a job spec in here, which is then just uploaded to the system. Now, the job spec that they upload in here is only displayed to the recruiters that they connect with. So they can leave, they can leave their company details in here, they can leave anything, they don't need to rewrite it. If they've got a spec they've already written, they can just drop that in there and they get, they get to decide who can and who can't see that. Okay. Um, Any specific file types they need to be aware of that you that you can work with or not work with? No, the main ones that we well, I know that we do we can do PDFs and we can do Word documents, which seems okay. to cover most things. But I think you know, I think we can put anything in there really, um, okay. and, it, and it and it works with it. Um, but then the other kind of bits of info we ask for is is job the the title of the job, where it's located, whether it's contract or perm, um, if there's any education requirements. And what the, what the skills are because the skill sets obviously depends on which recruiters will apply for it recruiters have uh, on our system we do software development at the moment and certain recruiters specialize in certain languages and technologies so if you give a steer here on what you're looking for the recruiters that feel confident in that area will then obviously apply um what the salary is that you're looking to pay and then we allow the employer to say what their preferred rate will be so to give the recruiter an indication of roughly what they're looking to pay as a fee okay cool so that's once once that goes live <laughs> yeah, yeah that's what it's about simplicity simplicity is one of our values we're trying to keep it simple um which is i think i think works um for us so once that goes live what it kind of looks like to the recruiter on on, on the other side um is you, screen all load up in a second it looks like this so it will be an, o an overview here um, of what the requirements are all the skill sets 
the budgets. This is a contract role, so it's looking at budgets there. And recruiters will then, from their side, be able to send a proposal to work the position. And proposals will then drop through here for employers. So we have a funnel system that works on, on a tab basis. So the proposals come in. When the employer chooses which recruiters they want, they become active recruiters. Then the candidates come in or the applicants come in there. And then when they're in the interview process, they're there and then they drop out at the end. So it's a good way for employers to be able to manage the funnel and see kind of where things are at. Yeah. So yeah. recruiters... That'd be, that'd be digging through a, a pile of uh, resumes that may be sitting on your desk. Well, I, I think so. <laughs> and, and one of the things we learned, I can't actually take credit for this too much because one of the things we learned with the first version was that we had everything on, on one screen almost, if you like. And employers were saying that. They were like, I come on here and it's just like a mess. I don't know what I've actioned and what I've not actioned, what I've dealt with and what's in what part of the process. So we were like, we need to make this a bit easier because now we have this at the end, a complete where we, we dump all the data that they've finished with. So either they've rejected or they've hired or whatever. Um, so they know that everything in here is stuff that they're either proposals they're yet to review, rec candidates they're yet to deal with or interview processes they're yet to close off. Makes it much easier for them to, to understand kind of what they need to do, which I think cool. is, is quite cool. Yeah. yeah. So, so the proposals, um, as I say, we allow the employer to say, this is my preferred fee. But from the recruiter side, we actually allow them to come back and say, hey, look, this is what I want to work to. Um, and the reason we do that is sometimes the clients are surprised and recruiters come in at lower than what they were expecting. Sometimes the recruiters all feel like their price was too low. So they, come, they all come in at a little bit higher. Um, we find that, you know, giving the recruiter the ability to say, Hey, I agree. That's what I want to work with rather than just being told this is the fee you have to work at seems to work a little bit better. Um, they put the fee in, they put the, the CVs, the number of CVs they believe they can deliver and the time frame in which they can deliver them in as well. So the employer gets to get an understanding of how many CVs they're going to see and how long they're going to have to wait. Um, cause that might influence which recruiter they want to go with. If they go in to view the proposal in full, the only other thing that they get to see is a pitch. So we give the recruiter an opportunity to pitch why they feel like that employer should work with them and why they think they can support them. Maybe they've got candidates already that for another role that they're working for another client that might be suitable for this one. So it gives the client an indication, okay, maybe I should connect with this guy because it sounds like he's already in contact with people, people that I need to, uh, need to see. Right. The, the other part of the proposal stage is the recruiter profile. So we make it quite easy for the employer to be able to flip between the proposal okay. and then see, and see which recruiter has sent that proposal. Um, as I explained in, in the podcast, what it contains is it contains the performance and the activity of the recruiter on our system. So you can see the number of positions they've filled, the number of CVs they've sent, the interviews they've had requested. This guy's done pretty good because he sent 21 CVs and he's had 20 interviews. Um, and yeah, how many? That guy, <laughs> that guy looks familiar too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Branded t-shirt as well, you see. <laughs> um, so, and how many days as well. So an employer can come in and, and, and get a complete, you know, unbiased overview of exactly what the recruiter's done. Um, we also have these two ratings here. Uh, the first of which is the CV rating. So when a recruiter has been connected to a client and they start sending through CVs, the recruiter scores every CV one out of five. And that drops back here. So you, you can see that out of the, 20, out of the 21 CVs, 20 have been reviewed and he's got an average rating of five. And that, and that breaks down like that. So the employer can come in and see exactly kind of how it's been okay. distributed. And I, and I assume they rate based on um, how closely the CV matches the qualifications that they're looking for in the position. Yeah, exactly that. So obviously the recruit, the recruiters had the chance to speak with the client. They've got, they've then had access to the full job specification. They know exactly who the company are, what the company are looking for. So we feel like at that point they should be well equipped to deliver accurate CVs. Um, yep. So then as they send them through the client then gets to score one out of five for how accurate they feel it is. Okay. The, the sniper rating is the second part. Um, and this is the rating that's given to the recruiter at the end of the process. So when a client is closing down a job or they're removing a recruiter from a role, they score the recruiter one out of five for how their experience was with that recruiter. And they write a small written recommendation here as well. So they start to build up um, on the profile. Yeah. So the employer can come in and they can say, okay, 
this is the bio of the guy. This is what they specialize in. This is what they do. This is his ratings. This is what people have said about him. Okay. Seems like a pretty cool guy. Um, yep. I'm going to accept that, you know? Um, and, and then they just go ahead. They decide, okay, I want to accept or I want to reject the proposal. Um, they leave some feedback as to why they are accepting or rejecting that recruiter. And anything they write in these, these feedback boxes is emailed directly to the recruiter. So the recruiter gets to know instantane instantaneously what the feedback is. Um, and the client doesn't have to then send another email. The system takes care of it. So it, if they decide that, okay, I want to work with that recruiter, it then drops into the active recruiters tab. So this is where the employer can get an overview of who's working on what job. So if they wanted to say, okay, have a look at what recruiters we've got in the Java job. Okay. We've got these two recruiters here. This is, and it tells them the number of CVs they've delivered um, and what time frame it was. And the employer can come back in and say, okay, this recruiter here has submitted one CV so far, kind of view the proposal he said he would deliver one CV so they can come in and see that they've, whether they've actually held their side of the bargain or not. Um, they can also remove the recruiter. As I said, if for whatever reason, positive or negative, they want, they feel like they don't want to work with that recruiter anymore. They can come in and hit remove recruiter. They score the recruiter one out of five, as I mentioned, leave them some feedback and that recommendation will drop onto the profile. The recruiter will also be made aware that they've been removed from the role and, and they will also be made aware of what the client said um, and what the client wrote in, in the feedback box. Cool. So yeah, that's, that, that's where they get an overview of active recruiters. Then when the applicants start to come in, do you have a question? I like, the feed, I like the, no, I just like the feedback that you're building into the system so people know what's going on, why, you know, rather than just remove them and tell them nothing. Um, you're giving them, they're getting an idea of ways they can prove. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, that, and that's what it's about. I think, you know, sometimes when I worked as a recruitment consultant, commun communication breakdown could, could be a massive issue when it's either reasons why employers aren't responding or why they don't want to move forward with a candidate. You know, it, it, it can sometimes be hard to get that information out of employers because they're, they're time short. So we're trying to build a system where they go, okay, I just quickly fill this in get rid of the recruiter and it, the, the communication aspects taken care of is done. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So then when, as I said, when uh, recruiters, when recruiters gain access to the role, they then gain access to be able to send applicants. They then also gain access to the full job spec as well. Um, and when they start to send applicants, it gets informed via email saying, Hey, you've got a new applicant. Here's the link. Um, come and check it out and the the file will drop in here so they can come in and then quickly see which role what the applicant's name is which recruiter has sent the applicant what the salary is what the fee is that was agreed at the proposal stage and what the end cost will be to them so they can say they can actually see okay this this hire is going to cost me x amount which i think is quite cool for them to be able to have that overview yeah uh, they then go into view applicant where they get a little bit more of a breakdown uh, when the candidate can interview, when the candidate can start, how many other companies the candidate is interviewing with at that point in time, the, the full CV is always there. So they can, they can view that's obviously a flow chart of how it works, right, but right, right. it will, it will open a PDF or a word document, whatever the recruiter attaches. Um, and again, we have the pitch section. So when a recruiter sends a CV, they can pitch to the employer why they feel like that candidate's going to be a match. Okay. Um, again, it's quite simple to just flick through to the profile. So they can say, okay, this candidate, who is it sent by? Okay, sent by that recruiter, fine. So they know, again, who it is that they're going to be communicating with. Um, they then make a decision on, do I want to interview that person or do I want to reject that person? Um, and, and as I mentioned, this is where the CV score comes in. So they've reviewed the applicant. They've had a look at the CV. They then say, okay, I want to proceed or I want to reject. Um, and they give it again, a little bit of feedback, which is sent to the recruiter. So the recruiter knows why the client has made that decision. And they also are made aware what score they're given as well. So they know what's dropping onto the profile again. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so I, I mean, I like how it's all self-contained so that somebody can just log in, take a look, know where they're at in the process. If they need to, uh, you know, it, all the communication is taken care of automatically. So they don't have to like schedule meetings to make sure yeah. you get on a phone call. And, you know, so it, it's just, it's all self-contained. And I like that. Yeah, it is. And, and there's, so, there's so many, 
you know, there's so many different places that we can take this. Like right now, if, if you hit interview applicant, um, the system will say to the recruiter, Hey, the client wants to meet your candidate and get in touch basically. And, and we let the, the recruiter and the client speak directly and arrange that interview. Well, something we've got coming, a feature we're working on at the moment is when, it, when a client requests an interview, they're going to say, I've got these free time slots. So I can make Tuesday at nine, Thursday at four and Friday at 10. And they'll send that to the recruiter. The recruiter will then get a message that says, these are free time slots the client make, can make. Can the candidate do it? Um, the recruiter can speak to the candidate, can come back, can log into Sniper, can say, yep, the candidate can make Wednesday at 10. And the system will then send diary invites to the recruiter, to the candidate and to the client. And it will just go boom. And it will send it straight away. So it, it will handle even more of the communication and even more of the setup process. Um, but obviously, we, we're adding these little bits, you know, chunk at a time. Right, 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 right. Cool. So, so if an applicant gets requested for an interview, the file will move down into interviewing. Again, this is where the client gets an overview of, right, who have we got interviewing at the moment, for what jobs, from what recruiters, at what prices. It's all there. Um, the interview thing that I just mentioned is going to be part of how we develop this part of the system. Eventually the system will allow the recruiter and the client to move the candidate through the interview process together. At the moment, it doesn't do that. We connect the two parties and then at the end of the interview process, when a client has made a final decision, okay, I'm going to hire that person or reject that person. They come back into the system and they deal with that on the applicant screen. So the buttons have now changed to, to hire and reject. Again, it's the same. You can see the profile. You can see the CV. Um, if you reject the candidate after interview, there's two boxes. First of is is for the candidate, like to, for, for information from the employer. Why is this candidate not passed? Why are you rejecting them? So the recruiter can actually go back and say to the client, to the candidate, hey, unfortunately, you've not passed. And this is the reasons that the employer gave. Um, the second part of it is the recruiter profile thing. So if we've got to this stage and the recruiter has not been removed from the, the, the role um, and they're closing off the job, they say, okay, this is how I felt the recruiter handled this process. Um, again, drops, drops back onto the profile. And as it says there, the feedback's mm -hmm. directly emailed to the recruiter. If, cool. if the client hires the person, slightly different we asked for start date and final salary the reasons the reasons that we ask for that is because sniper deals with the invoicing and the payment side of things because we want employers to deal with one point of contact every time i mean that's the thing when you've got 50 freelance guys if they're dealing with a different person every time it could be a bit frustrating so the concept is you know they deal with sniper every single time so they tell us when the candidate starts what the final salary is so that we know when to invoice and what to invoice and again because they're closing off that role they just leave a quick recommendation that drops onto the profile yeah. um, so that's it the only the only other part of the system is the complete section uh, which is basically when, once a candidate's been hired rejected at whatever stage it drops in here so that the client can always come back and look at previous candidates there might be somebody they met with previously that's come up maybe for, for a new job and they say, Hey, we met a guy actually two or three weeks ago that could be a match for that. They can come back in here. They can view the applicant again. If they want to actually open up communication again, they can do so. You know, we keep all of the candidates that they've met with so that if for whatever reason they do change their mind or something else comes up that might be a fit, they can come back in and let that recruiter know we've got another job for this person. Can we bring them back in? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that could be that, that alone could be super time consuming or time saving rather <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it can be time consuming if they have to go back and try to figure out okay who did i talk to before but yeah. when you have it all right here it saves them a lot of time because they can i'm sure there's probably people in the list eventually that they're like you know what this person was close they didn't make it for that role but maybe this is the role for them and then you don't have to go search for them again it's yeah right. exactly exactly that and and the other thing is that we have a we have a six month ownership clause so one thing that recruiters ask all the time is you know how do you protect us um, as recruiters, you know, so that when we put candidates on the system, the client doesn't just hire them directly without us, you know, being able to claim a fee. And and Got what it. we do, what we do is we have a six month ownership clause on all the candidates. Um, so once a candidate has been sent to a client, they can't hire that person for six months after submission date. Otherwise, they're liable to pay a fee. 
Um, and again, this helps us to keep track of, okay, these are the candidates you've seen. So that if a client, say a client does get a CV from a recruiter outside the system and they think, wait a minute, have I already met this guy? They can come in and search here and go, oh, we have. So actually we need to hire them through Sniper because if we hire them outside, we'll have to pay a fee twice, if that makes sense. Right. So we, tr we try yeah. and give that data there so that they don't slip up, you know, because we don't want them to hire somebody outside the system that, that has already been represented to them here. Yeah, so it protects totally. everybody, if that makes sense. No, no, I totally get it. It makes a lot of sense. I know right now I'm looking to hire Billy the Wiz. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's a funny story actually based I, on a, I, love, I love demo stuff when you get to kind of <laughs> play with the system and you make up names <laughs> yeah 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 well um that ca that came from a photo of my brother years and years ago I, i'll share it with you you don't have to include it in the photo but we called this photo billy the whiz because it was taken at a wedding about 10 years ago i don't know if you can nice. see it but it looks like he's like flying across the dance floor. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> it was always labeled the Billy the Wiz photo. Um, and that's where that, that name came from. But yeah, we, we had that all the time. And that's me funny. and my co, it, well, me and my co-founder, we put all sorts on here at, at one point and um, we had, I had a chat with him and I was like, mate, we actually need to kind of calm down because I'm demoing this site. Right. And, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and some of the applicant names and the recruiter names probably aren't quite appropriate. So yeah, we, we do have to be a little bit careful, but yeah, sometimes it's nice to put a smile on your face. Right. Billy I think Wiz. Billy, I think Billy the Wiz is perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, cool. Luke, anything else you, you'd like to share with us before we uh, wrap up? No, I don't think so. I will just share with you the homepage. Um, as I was saying earlier, like if people want to contact me, sniper.co.uk is the homepage. Scroll down. There's a little caricature of me. Um, you can find me there. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm sure my details are plastered all over this, um, this website as well. If not, then my email address is just my full name at sniper.co.uk. So people can contact me there if, if, if anybody wants to have a chat around what we're trying to do. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. I think if you're an employer or you're a recruiter listening to this, you owe it to yourself to go check it out. Um, you, it's very, I, I, I like it from what I've seen, very closed system, lots of communication back and forth. Definitely worth checking out. Luke, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Pleasure. And employers, thank recruiters, you. go check out Sniper. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate your time.